This is Dan Abbott. I am uh, making this video to give you an idea how to approach the SOLIDWORKS Certified Professional Exam by going through the part in the practice exam that you can download from the SOLIDWORKS website. I have a uh, little yellow dot representing my cursor and if you'll notice right over here it's the certifi Certified Practice Exam. Let's scroll down a little bit. This requires you to make a part, to modify that part, and answer several questions about it. The exam states that if you can do this in 30 minutes and answer all the questions that you should be prepared for the exam and I'd say that's probably true. This is a relatively complex part and on the professional level exam it's not so much the complexity as it is the speed with which you can accomplish certain things. One of the things that they do on all their exams is give you a series of dimensions that you know will change. So if you look up here, the letter X and the letter E are used to represent sizes that means someplace they're going to give you those values. If you scroll down, I'll show you there's a series of variable names. A, they don't have to be, but I'm going to recommend that you make them variables. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, uh, X, and Y. F represents a whole wizard, so I'm not going to do anything with that, but what I would recommend you do with these others is create an equation with a global variable for the letter A, B, C, D, E, X, and Y representing those values because you know you're going to have to change those values. In order to do that, Go to SolidWorks where I've already started a part and I've already made sure that it's based on, if you look down at the bottom, it's based on MMGS so that it's measured in millimeters. If you go to the drop down for tools, to the equations tool, open up the equation manager, you can now go in here and just start typing in a value. Press the tab key or just click over and then type in that value. This would be 213 millimeters. I'm going to go offline periodically in this video. This means I'm just going to pause it, do some things to shorten the video itself, and then come back. So I'm going to pause, fill out this um, equation manager, and then... So here's the equation um, manager after adding all the global variables. You notice the letter A equals 213. They don't need to be uppercase or lowercase, by the way. You can use them either way. So I've got A, B, C, and D, and E defined. X is A divided by 3. Y is B divided by 3 plus 10. You don't need to put any quotes around there. You just type in the value and then put in the the um, operator, everything works fine. Now I've got a sketch started here, and that sketch, which I'll now edit, does not have any dimensions on it. When I place a dimension on this rectangle, which I've anchored to the origin, by the way, they never tell you to do anything with the origin. They always tell you it's arbitrary. I find that it's a still a good idea to use the origin in a logical way because it can help you make your edits much more effectively in the future. When you place a dimension, you don't have to just type in a value, you can put the equal sign and when it says equal to what, you go down here and pick a variable right there equal to, actually this one would be equal to B, not A. So you can type it in or you can select it when you just pick the green button, the green check I mean. <clears throat> go out like that. Now I'll come over and do the one on the left. Again, once you place it, you type in an equal sign. You can say I want a variable. This one would be A. That gives us a rectangle now. Do that one more time. I'm going to just type in the letter A. I just uh, clicked on cancel by mistake. So now the equation is there and you can see because you got the Greek sigma letter those equations now when I come over here and do a, an extrusion I'll do an extrusion of 25 millimeters it's blind it's going straight up. Now if we go back in the equation editor you'll notice that not only do you have the variables but then down at the bottom you have the two equations that you just created. Should you ever want to delete those equations, you have to delete them both from the model and from the equation manager itself. Now the next thing we're going to do is to create that shape. I'm moving over here now and just going down to the uh, model, it's up to the model itself. I'm going to create that shape represented right here by the dimension of 80. You notice that it goes up, goes into a curve, and then goes over. The wall thickness is uniform. I'm going to use the thin extrude for that by just sketching a line that's 80 millimeters long, goes to the quadrant of a, an arc, and then goes up here, and it's also 80 millimeters long here, and then just to mention its location, using the letter C as my variable. In order to do that, so let's sketch on this surface right here. And there's a little trick that people often overlook with SolidWorks, which allows me to say, start drawing a line. I'll just get some point up here. Now if I continue, I'm drawing a straight line. If I go back and hover, now I can draw a tangent arc 
but if I hover and go directly to the right, now what I'm doing is drawing a 90 degree arc, which means I'm making a uh, relationship between the quadrant of this arc and the endpoint of that line. If I go up so I get my tracking lines and then come across like that, it's going to give me a little less work to do because now I can say I want this dimension right there to be 80. I want this dimension right here to be 80. And then the distance from here to here is going to be equal to the letter C. And that is a fully defined sketch. I don't need to do anything else because those coincident relations are quadrant relations. That's everything that I need. I come back over here, do an extrusion. I'm just going to go no. I don't want to do any reversing. You'll know what happens is I've got a thin extrude. The thin extrude at the moment has a width of 10. I'll change it to 15. Just make sure it's going in the right direction. You can switch that by doing this. But I do want this going in that direction. That corresponds to the image over here pick my green checkbox and oh, I do need to tell it how tall to go and what it didn't do. It was set to 25. I'm going to set it to 95. Okay, another little trick here. 95 is not from the surface I drew on up. 95 is from the bottom. So I'm going to say start the extrusion from a surface and the surface I'll start it from is that bottom surface. Now I can type in a 95 without worrying about the changes to the thickness of the part. So I have a fixed dimension of 95. It comes up like this. Now I would go ahead and finish up the base before adding those cylinders, although it really doesn't matter what order you put them in. But if you look at this area right there, I'm going to have that little sunken spot, a little bit of a well there. It would be a lot easier to create if I could use convert entities, but in order to use convert entities, I need to start by adding... Sorry about that. I was actually trying to look at it as though it was solid work. I want to add that little raised boss right in the corner right there. So I'll come over here. I'll do another sketch. I'll indicate that I want to sketch on this surface right here. This time I'll draw a rectangle from the corner method. I'll snap to that corner. Bring this over like that. Put in my dimensions. The dimensions are 60 and 60. Except I typed in a 30 instead of a 60 on that one. Now I'm looking at the radius on that corner, and it's a radius of 15 on the inside. I'm going to put that in right now because I consider that part of the feature itself rather than a, a separate fillet feature. So I'm going to put that in here so when I do my offset, I can automatically get that coming. Now once again, I'm going to do an extrusion that goes from a surface other than the surface that I drew on. So instead of starting on the sketch plane, I'm going to say start on the surface at the bottom. Because again, the dimension given for the height of that is given over on the left, and it was given as 35 right there. So it's given as 35 from the bottom. So if I start on the bottom and then indicate a, an extrusion of 35, instead of doing the math, and again, if these things change down the road, I might have to do math more than once. So rather than just make that come up 10, I'm going to make it go 35 from the bottom. That means my design intent is maintained. Now having drawn that, what I want to do next is to create an offset representing a 9 millimeter wall thickness that's consistent all the way around. So I'll go back over to sketch, say place a sketch on that surface, and I'm really going to do a convert entities. But if I use offset instead of convert entities and pick a surface, it automatically does a convert entities and an offset. I'm going to reverse that, change the size to 9, pick OK, now I've got a shape that I can extrude down into the part. And I'm going to extrude it down into the part, again going back over to the drawing on the left, until it is within 5 millimeters. You see right down there? I want it to go within 5 millimeters of the bottom. Again, I'm not doing any math here. I'm not going to try to, to uh, subtract 5 from the total thickness and then come up with a specific depth because it's possible that something about that thickness will change in the future. But I'll still want to maintain that, that thickness of 5 at the bottom. So I'm going to go to Features, Extruded Cut. I'll start with a sketch plane this time, but now instead of going blind, I'm going to go Offset from Surface. Pick that as my surface and offset 5 millimeters. Now it's just going to extrude down within 5 millimeters of that surface. So now I've got a pocket that looks just like that. If I look back on the left once again, it tells me there are six places with a radius of 10. 
So I'll go ahead and I'll put a fillet in, a single fillet now. And I'll just pick all those edges. Can't just pick the surface because it would try to fill it stuff I don't want filleted. So I'll pick all those edges. Notice you can pick right through, at least most of the time you can. You can pick right through the part if you're careful. Like so. Click OK. Now I've got the pocket laid in there. Now before I add the cylinders, I'll go ahead and I'll put that whole wizard hole in the uh, top surface. Go back to the sketch plane. I'm sorry, go back to features and I go over to hole wizard. Hole wizard comes up. There's two tabs. One of the tabs indicates the type of hole I want to place. The other is the position. Doesn't matter where you start, but I'll start with type. What I want is a counter bore. Let me just go back to where it describes that so you can take a look at it. I want a counter bored hole. It's going to be a metric size hole for a hex bolt, which means the head size was, was uh, designed for that bolt. ANSI B18.2.3.5M, because that's what it tells me to do over here. I'm going to pick a size from the list. It says M8, so I'm going to pick M8. It doesn't mean it. We'll find out in a minute. But And then it asks for the fit being close. You've got three choices here. I'm going to have to pick show custom spacing because there's custom sizing because they're changing the sizes of this actual counter bore. So first you have to select that and until you do you don't get a choice here. Now I can go in and it tells me that the standard hole size would be 8.4 but it's telling me to change that to 15. And the counter bore size it's telling me to change to 30 and the counter bore depth it's telling me to change to 10. Now, through all, because it tells me to go through all. But down here, you've got something checked off for head clearance. And if you're not careful, if these things have already got things checked in here, you might end up adding something you don't want. So make sure that there are no head clearances, because it doesn't tell you to do any head clearances. Now you can switch from the type back over to position. We're going to pick that surface right there. You don't need to select the surface before going into hole wizard anymore, by the way. You used to have to do that, but that changed, I believe, in 2011. So I'll grab that surface, put this on, and I realize that I must have typed in an incorrect number over here. I did, 302 instead of 35, instead of 30. So I'm going to go and fix that right now so it doesn't look stupid. <clears throat> so now that I've placed that point, I'm going to do a smart dimension. Indicate the dimension from here to here is 30. That the dimension from here to here, also 30. I can just pick the OK button now, and it should put that counterboard hole in there just like that. Just be careful when you do that, that you clear that last box, because by default, it may well be on. So if you've got down here head clearance turned on or near side countersink turned on or under counter head sink, far side countersink, any of those options turned on will have a specific value and that's going to change the results you get when you try to get the uh, mass of the part later on. Now what I'd like to do is to draw on this front surface right here. So we're going to go what I was just doing, by the way, was our, my mouse gestures. So if you hold on the right mouse and start moving it, you can go right to the front view. Now on that front view, I'm going to say, let's do a sketch. And I'm just going to grab that surface right there. I'll draw a circle. I'm going to snap to the midpoint of that line, because it does show me on the drawing over here that it's centered. Showing that right over here, 7.5 to the center line. So I'll just put that in. I'm going to put a dimension on it. I'm not putting the hole in at this point. I'm going to make that equal to X because I need that hole to cut out something later on. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But you'll also notice if you look on the left that there's a 10 millimeter overhang on the end of that cylinder. So that when I go to my extruded boss, I'm not going to start from the sketch plane. I'm going to start from an offset from the sketch plane. And that offset's going to be 10 millimeters. Just make sure it's going in the correct direction, that you're offsetting it this way. Now, my actual length is given as the letter D. I cannot type that in here. I have to give it a value. I'm just going to give it a value of 100, even though I know that's incorrect. Tell it to go in the right direction. And I'm giving it 100 rather than the actual dimension so that when I come back out, I can immediately pick this, find the dimension I just gave it, double click on it, 
I need to have it come up. Uh, I actually just paused because I was having trouble dimensioning, uh, double clicking that, and I realized I had another part file open, and there is, I think, a glitch in SolidWorks. But if you have another part file open and you've done some dimensioning there, sometimes when you double click on a dimension, it does that. So what I want to do in this case is to make sure there's no other parts open, close it, and then see if I can make it. And although it did work, now it doesn't. Now it does this again. And the problem with this is I can change that value, but I cannot change it by adding. It's like changing it on the left. I cannot change it by adding an equation. If I say let's make that equal to D, it doesn't do anything. So what I'm going to do, unfortunately, is stop, auto, uh, stop SolidWorks, restart it, and then see if that fixes it. Okay, I have stopped SolidWorks and restarted it. Now if we double click on this, comes up, double click, and that's what it's supposed to do, equals D. Uh, that's, I have no other explanation for that than that uh, once in a while SolidWorks needs to be restarted, so that's what happened there. Now you notice that I changed that, but it didn't appear to get any longer. So when you make a change like that um, by adding an equation and an extrusion, make sure you do a rebuild. And when you do the rebuild, it should come up and do what you need it to do. Anyway, that's worth knowing that on occasion when you double click a dimension and try to change it, you don't get the actual editor, you get something else. Um, now, I'm going to put the hole in now. I didn't do that at the time I first created that cylinder because I want to make sure that it cuts through that um, piece that comes up. And you notice since it has to come up to the center, that's the way I created it. I'm going to go to Sketch draw a circle on the end of this cylinder, hover over the edge so that I can get the center, anchor it to the center, put in a smart dimension, and put the smart dimension in. The whole size in this case is equal to the letter E, so I'll make it equal to E. And now I'm going to go over and do an extruded cut. I am um, not going to do a through all. Through all is probably fine here, but I'm going to go up to surface because I find that on complex parts that's safer, that that's what I intend. That's what I'm going to tell it exactly what to do. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side um, that I did over here. So if you want to watch this again, you'll see how I'm about to do it, but I'm going to go offline to do that to shorten it. Now I'm back and I just placed this cylinder. Once again, I'm going to take that dimension, double click, and that's what it's supposed to do right there. Equal to D, press enter, does that. And even though it showed me the right length, if it doesn't give you the right length, make sure you go up and do a rebuild. When you do the rebuild, it should come out correct. And that's what that part looks like. I'm not going to put a hole in the other end. Starting from here, I'm going to go through that cylinder and then put a couple chamfers in, um, and then we'll check the map. Now adding the chamfers, Notice right over here it tells you there are four places, 4x, with a 2 by 45 millimeter chamfer. Go up to under the fillet, find the chamfer command. You can pick the edge. And just notice you can pick through the part now. Makes things a little bit easier. Um, it's going to be a 2 millimeter by 45 degree chamfer. I'll do a full preview. Pick the green button looks like that. Now one of the things you need to do is to make sure that the material is set correctly. In this case I've got the material set to alloy steel because that's what it indicated. If you right click and look at edit material, when you pick one just go and check and make sure that the density is set correctly. And you'll notice by the way that right now my density is being given in pounds per cubic inch. I need to make sure the units used for this are metric. In that case the density is 0 0.0077 kilograms per cubic centimeter. Um, do a little bit of math on that and it should be what they've told you over here. Mil materials alloy steel. Density is 0 0.0077 grams per cubic millimeter. Everything matches up. Now we should be able to go and get the correct answer. Correct answer in this case is one of these four right here. So we're going to go mass properties by going to evaluate. Mass properties, 14207.34, 14207.34 is answer D. Now as you go and progress down through here, you'll be making changes to this basic model. So if we come back down through, we got an answer that was right on the money, so which means we probably have done this correctly. Now we're going to ask 
be asked a question where they don't give you multiple choice. They just ask you for the mass. And all we need to do is go and change our equations. So if we come back over here, right click Manage Equations, and we're going to change the letter A in this case to 225. B is going to change to 210. C is going to change to 176. D is going to change to 137. E is going to change to 39. And you've got to be careful here. They get a little tricky. Make sure you check and see if the um, whole wizard has changed at all. And it has not. X is still A over 3. Y is still B over 3 plus 10. Should be able to pick OK. Now we should be able to go up once again to evaluate mass properties 16490.48 grams. Now, again, there's no multiple choice here. You just have to type that in on the exam itself. If we go to the end of the practice exam, they'll give us the right answers 16490.45, 16490.48. Okay, we're off by three hundredths of a gram. Um, that will happen on occasion, and they tell you that if you're within, you know, 1% or so, that you probably have the right answer. That's probably within two or three thousandths of a percent, so I'm sure it's the right answer. Um, but that does happen sometimes when you look at these. They've got a slightly different result, but it's very small difference. And by the way, if you type this answer in as given uh, in the exam, it would be counted as a correct answer because there is a range, a relatively small range, but it's much bigger than this, a range in the sizes you can type in. Uh, as you continue to go through the exam, they continue to ask you to make changes. Here they've got changes very much like what we just did, changing the letter A to something else, B to something else. You'll notice, though, they've also changed Y. Now, they give you a hint in the practice exam. They're not going to do that in the standard exam, so you just have to be very careful to read down through all of these. Make sure that the whole wizard dimensions haven't changed any, and they have not. So other than the numbers for A, B, C, D, and E, the equation for Y is also, no, it didn't actually. It's the same, isn't it? Um, so that is the same. Having made those changes, and I've done that while I was paused, if we go to mass properties again, now it should be 15,100.46 grams. Come back over to look at the bottom for the right answer. The right answer is 15,100.47. You can see there's still a little bit of a difference out there. And again, that's just the difference in the way that that's a really a floating point precision issue with uh, SOLIDWORKS. And now we're down to stage two, and this is where it gets a little more complicated. You need to make, make another modification. I'm just going to show you a couple of things about this. Uh, here they've concentrated three areas of change. They've taken away that raised boss. They've added a little bit of a undercut at BB, and they've added another pocket on the back side. And one of the things, looking this over, I don't believe they show you what the wall thickness at the bottom of that pocket is supposed to be in the new one, which means we're going to assume that it, no, that's the old one. We're going to assume that it is the same as the old one. We don't have any other choice. We'll see if we come up with the right answer. First, coming over here, what we'll try to do to get rid of that raised boss is simply go up and find it. If we find it, which is right there, I'm going to go ahead and suppress it. It'll come up and give me an error because there's probably a fillet that need yeah, that fillet right there, so I'll suppress that one as well because that fillet was required for that. Now there's one little problem when you first look at this, and I want to bring your attention to it. Because I use convert entities, right there I've got a little bit of a radius because what happened when I got rid of that fillet is I got rid of the fillet all around, including areas where there was no edge. That makes sense. I'll just go back and put it in. It tells you there's five places with a radius of 10. One of those places is right in here. So before I put the fillet in, what I want to do is to edit this cut extrude sketch. And that cut extrude is cut extrude 1. Open up the sketch, and we'll zoom right in. And you notice there's a little bit of a radius there. So I'm going to get rid of it. And because it was done with convert entities. Rather than try to stretch that out, I'm just going to draw a little piece that connects it. 
lines up with that, lines up with this. Make sure that it's still a fully defined sketch, which it is. Should give me a sharp corner now. And it does. So now you can go back in, add another fillet feature, and then with that fillet feature you can pick all the corners you need. So I can take that one, that one. These are all a radius of 10, which is what it's showing me. This one, that one. One, two, three, four, five. Got all five of them. So that takes care of the changes in that area right there with that pocket. Now there's another pocket on the back side. So let's go back and add that. I'm going to add that using the Convert Entities tool as well. But I'm not going to do the Offset Convert Entities because there's so many additional lines that I would get as a result. So instead I'm going to say let's put a sketch on that surface. Go directly to Convert Entities. We'll convert that arc, this line, and this line. And wall thickness is 9, so I'm going to also convert that arc right there. Now I'll get those lines. I'm going to take all of them because I don't really want those. So I'm going to take every one of those, hold the control key down, pick each one of the lines. Oops, first I need to get out of convert entities. Take each one of those lines and what I want to do to them is to convert them into construction lines. Because I don't want to actually create any geometry with those directly. Okay, now what I'm going to do is an offset entities. I'll say let's offset this, 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 and this. We want to go in the other direction so we'll reverse it. We want the wall thickness, the uniform wall thickness to be 9 so we'll change that to 9 up here. Pick OK. Now I'm going to have to draw another connecting line that goes from here and this goes straight down to that line. Draw another connecting line that goes from here goes over to this line. Then I'm going to do a little trimming. Be careful if you do this that you don't trim too much because we need that. So I'm just going to trim. Yeah, We need the construction line so don't trim it out. Now again there's a couple of uh, corners in here. Those corners have a radius of 10 and there's three of them. Um, so I'm going to put those in as fillets. Come back over here. Do another extruded cut. Once again I'm going to go from the sketch plane but I'm going to do offset from surface. Pick the bottom since it didn't tell me otherwise, I'm going to make it 5 and hope that it works out okay. Now I've got that little pocket coming down in here. I'll go add my fillets to it. But now I'm back because I realized that I made an error. I offset that arc as well so that I ended up a little arc in here. And I need to get rid of that because that actually is dimensioned over here as three places that have a radius of 10. So I've got to go back in. I've got to change on that extrude cut. I've got to change that sketch. And I'm going to do the set, not that sketch. That sketch right there. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to delete that arc. Rather than back up any further than this, I'm just going to go ahead and put a square corner on it. So I'll say go from here to here. Make sure everything lines up. It looks good. Now I've got that square corner. I can go back in and do my fillet on that one. So we're going to fill it that edge, that has an edge now, that has an edge now. We'll be okay. uh, now we're going to need to put that little uh, piece right here. In order to do that I'm going to do a sketch. And if I look over on the side that's back 30 so I'm going to, everything's off the end so I'm going to put a sketch right on the end of that cylinder. That sketch is going to consist of two circles. I'm just going to bring them too big just so I can add the dimensions afterward and have them fit. Now if you take a look, the reason I need two circles is because, yeah, I have to, okay, so the, um, the little notch of the undercut is 10 millimeters smaller than the dimension of that first circle. So what I want to do is that circle is a diameter of x. What I'm going to do is make a circle with a diameter that is x minus 20. That'll give me a circle with a wall difference, a wall thickness difference of 10. So for the first dimension, I'll put that in equal to, and it is x minus 20. So that gives me the inside. 
but I also need another circle, and that's this one right here, and I want that one to have the same size. So I'm going to pick that circle, and I'm going to pick the outside circle of that cylinder. Those two have to be equal in order for this to make a cut. So now I've got the two circles that I'll use for the cut. I'll go up to Features, Extruded Cut. Now again, I need to start this 30 millimeters in from the end. So I'm going to say start by offsetting 30 millimeters from the end. Change the direction so it starts inside. And I'm going to go blind for 30 millimeters in that direction. Here's why I needed both circles to make a cut that looks like this. Um, that looks like everything, but it's really important that you go back and take a look carefully at the drawing they give you. And you notice over here they circled it four places, two by 30 degrees. Now that's not the proper way to dimension a chamfer because you don't know which direction the 30 degrees goes in. So all we can do is go and change the 45 to a 30. Hope that that works. If it gets us the right answer, we know it's right. Um, I don't see any other way to do that because it's really hard to tell looking at this drawing whether the 30 goes that way or this way. So we're going to just change the 45 to a 30. So I'm back over on the part. I just right clicked on chamfer, change the 45 to a 30, make it look like that. And I believe that's all the changes that we have over here. We'll drag down and see what it tells us to do next. We have to make a few changes to all these equations. And here's a place where we actually do change it. So it's now 15. And then it gives us some choices. I'm going to change all those off line. I'll pause to do it and we'll come back and see if it worked. Here's the equation editor. You'll notice that one of the changes I had to make was to make the 10 of 15 for the equation for y. Pick OK. Not a bad idea when you make a change like this to go ahead and rebuild the part. So we'll check the mass. We come down. It says 13171.37. I come over here and look at the options. Um, None of those options is one of the answers that I got. Now, it's off by enough, so I obviously overlook something. Most of the, the closest answer is a little bigger. Most of the answers are bigger, so let's just assume for right now that I must have left something out. And so let's go look for it. And this may happen to you on the exam. What would have been different about this? So what I'm going to do is look at each one of these and I'm going to put my model in the same position and just kind of look it over quickly and see if there's anything that appears to be missing. So looking from that point of view, which is where I am right now, I don't see anything that appears to be missing. Looking from this point of view, checking it with this one, appears to be the same. Looking at it from this side right here, which would be the front view, that looks pretty good. Then turning it around, looking at it from the right side view, bingo, right there. I've got a little place that I needed to fill in and I didn't do it. So that's what's missing and that would can make a difference in the mass. Um, that doesn't look like it's a flat surface right there, so I'm not going to extrude anything from there. Instead, what I'm going to do is to do a sketch on the bottom of this part, and I'm going to do what I, all I want to do is to fill that little area in right there. So what I'm going to do in this case is a convert entities. I'm going to pick this. Go ahead and convert the entities. You notice it throws them down here. Now I can do a, an extrude. And in this case, I'm going to do an extrude up to surface. I'm going to pick that surface right there. Looks like it goes up through OK. Now that looks better. Now rather than keep on going and looking for any other problems that I might have, I'm immediately going to go up here to evaluate mass properties 13206.36, 13206.40. Now again, we've got a little bit of a difference out there, but that is a repeatability problem with SOLIDWORKS. I don't think that's a problem with anything that's been drawn. Now this may happen to you as well. It's very easy to overlook something in one of these things and it's not it's important not to kind of panic. Just go through and methodically look at each one and I do think the easiest way to do that is to put your model in the position shown and then kind of glance at it see if there's anything obvious. That little opening in the middle wasn't showing up because you couldn't see it from any of the isometric. Now is that over or not? Let's see what else. We got one more question and this question simply requires that we go and change some values right here. So I'll do those offline as well. We'll check to see if it's correct. 
So all I've done now is made modifications to the equations as given here. If I go up and do a mass properties, 14207.97. I don't have any options here, so I just have to type it in. But if I drag down 1420, oh, 8.00, so it's three hundredths of a gram off, and the difference between those two, actually it would be a ridiculous difference, 14207.97 divided by 14208. Yeah, we're out in the six, six or seventh decimal place. Yeah, so that's an extremely minor error. That's not going to make any difference on the exam itself. Uh, I'm going to go offline. I'm going to do this whole thing again and just see if I get the same answer. And I did. Same answer both times. So we're in, uh, we're in good shape. That's the uh, approach. I think this video has gotten well over half an hour. Um, hope it's helpful, and uh, we'll see how, if the yellow and the flashing red got annoying to you, 